Good morning, everyone. This is our launch contingency news conference from Vandenberg Air Force Base. And here to discuss what happened this morning with our Taurus launch with the Glory spacecraft is Omar Baez, the NASA launch director from the Kennedy Space Center. Ron Graby, the general manager for the Orbital Sciences Corporation Launch Systems Group. Rich Straka, the Deputy General Manager for Operations from the Orbital Sciences Corporation's Launch Systems Group. And Mike Luther, the Deputy Associate Administrator for Programs for the Science Mission Directorate at NASA Headquarters. And we'll begin first with Omar Baez. Omar? Thank you, George. Um, it's a very uh, difficult situation we're in here, and I'm going to try to explain to you um, what happened um, uh, last night and into this morning as far as the countdown and all the events as we uh, got through them and what we know to this point. Uh, th last night our team came in at uh, 10 p.m. to open up the checklist for the Taurus T9 Glory mission. Um, we set up the uh, facilities and the range, powered up the Taurus launch vehicle, we checked out the FTS system, uh, we got through our poles. We got into the hot count. Um, we encountered uh, no anomalies um, with the spacecraft or the launch vehicle or the range in the whole count. Um, at T minus five minutes, we did our last pull and uh, we lifted off at 209.43 this morning, right on target. Um, stage zero. Burned nominally for a minute and 25 seconds. Stage one uh, then ignited, and a millisecond later, we separated from the uh, stage zero and continued flight. Um, we did that till uh, two minutes and 45 seconds, uh, where we had indication of burnout of the uh, stage one, and we had ignition of uh, stage two. About six seconds later, after um, a stage two ignition, uh, we were expecting to see the uh, fairing on the uh, T9 separate. We didn't see the indication of fairing separation. Um, there was other indications such as performance loss that we saw a little bit later on in flight, uh, but we failed to make orbit. And. Uh, and all indications are that uh, the um, satellite and the rocket or, or um, is in the Southern Pacific Ocean somewhere. And that's all I have for you. All right, thank you, Omar. And now to Ron Graby, the general manager for the Orbital Sciences Corporation Launch Systems Group. Ron? Thanks. Um, well, let me just say, this is a pretty tough night for all of us. A um, little over two years ago, we had a similar tough night when we conducted a Taurus launch for the OCO mission. Uh, that mission suffered a, uh, a failure. The failure was a failure of the fairing to, uh, to separate. Uh, we conducted an extensive investigation of that anomaly, and we traced the most probable cause to a failure of the fairing separation initiation system. We've spent the last two years doing the analysis on what went wrong that last time, uh, redesigning the system and testing the components of the system. We went so far as to completely change out the initiation system to a system that we use on one of our other vehicles, the Minotaur IV vehicle. And in the intervening two years, that system has flown successfully three times. So we really went into this flight feeling confident that we had nailed the fairing issue. And then we came up with the result that uh, Omar described this evening. Um, let me just say that uh, there's a great deal of emotional investment on the part of all the players uh, on, a, on any space flight, but that's probably doubly so on a return to flight effort like this one. 
Um, I'll just speak briefly to the uh, you know the, the emotional state, if you will, of the of the team, and I mean the broad team, the launch team, the spacecraft team, on both uh, the industry and the NASA side. I, w I think it's not an understatement to say that tonight we're all pretty devastated, uh, but we will recover. Uh, we'll, the team will bounce back because they're all professionals, and uh, orbital sciences will bounce back with the Taurus vehicle. Let me uh, turn it over to Rich Straka, and Rich will go through um, some of the differences between the system that we flew on OCO and what we flew here tonight. All right, thank you, Ron. And Rich Straka is the Deputy General Manager for Operations for Orbital Sciences Launch Systems Group. Rich? Okay, um, to give you an idea of what we changed, I'll just go through a brief description of how the, what the fairing is and how it works. Uh, the Taurus uses a clamshell fairing and the fairing is held onto the vehicle or constrained to the vehicle with what we call frangible joints. And those joints are meant to explosively fracture when commanded to do so. Uh, when the joints explosively fracture, uh, the, the fairing is then uh, in two halves and there are piston pushers that push the fairing off. Uh, in the OCO uh, vehicle and previous Taurus vehicles, uh, we used what was called a hot gas system to do that pushing job. So <clears throat> there was a pyrotechnically initiated combustion process that, cr that generated hot gas, and the pressure of that hot gas uh, pushing the pistons pushed the fairing halves apart. Um, as Ron said, in the investigation, we identified the most probable cause of the OCO failure uh, as a failure to initiate that hot gas uh, combustion process. So what we did in response to that is we swapped out or we changed out, redesigned the deployment system to use a cold gas system, which is a pressurized bottle of nitrogen uh, that then when commanded uh, functions by pressurizing those same pistons and pushing the fairing halves apart. Um, it uses a completely different initiation system and a completely different uh, pressurization methodology than the OCO system. And as Ron said, we, we really felt like we had the problem nailed, uh, and that particular system uh, has flown three times last year. A very similar system, uh, almost identical system, flew in our Minotaur 4 product line successfully uh, three times last year. So. Uh, Right now, we're, we're uh, crunching the data, but uh, there's really not enough uh, data that's been processed so far to really tell any more than uh, the fairing didn't, uh, didn't deploy. And uh, that's about all I have to say. Thank you, Rich. And Mike Luther, the Deputy Associate Administrator for, Administrator for Programs for the Science Mission Directorate and NASA Headquarters. Mike? Well, clearly, uh, the Science Mission Directorate and uh, the Earth Science Division is uh, extremely disappointed in the, in the loss tonight. We had worked closely at all levels of uh, the agency and with our industry partners to evaluate this risk, and we felt uh, going in that we believed we had an acceptable level of risk. Clearly, we missed something. Um, so we'll, we've now got to go off find out what that is, fix it, and that is, in fact, what we will do. In the meantime, <clears throat> um, we, we have uh, lost the GLORY mission. It would have made important measurements for the understanding of uh, Earth as a system and of the impacts of climate change. However, the Earth, uh, SMD, the Science Mission Directorate, and the Earth Science Division will continue to contribute and make significant contributions to the understanding <clears throat> of the Earth with its 13 existing operating missions and a cadre of aircraft um, and ground networks and data systems contributing to Earth science research. In addition, uh, we'll continue to plan uh, the path forward into the next decade uh, with uh, a cadre of, uh, of uh, more than a dozen missions to be launched in the next 10 years. All right, thank you, Mike, and we're ready now for questions. Please give your name and affiliation when the microphone comes to you. We'll start here in the front with Nora. Oh, thank you, Nora Wallace at the Santa Barbara News Press. Omar, you said something about um, other indications of performance loss. Can you expand on that at all? 
Yeah, what you see is since we didn't jettison the fairing, you see we're, we're expecting to shed weight as the fairing comes off. And obviously, we didn't shed that weight, and the rocket just can't carry you into orbit with, with that extra amount of weight. Janine Scully, Santa Maria Times, Lompoc Record. Can you, I know it's still early and you haven't thoroughly gone through the data, but can someone explain how similar this is to the OCO failure? Um, do you have indication of partial separation? Is there any kind of assessment that you can give in terms of OCOs? I guess I can take that. Um, we really don't have any of the data processed yet. It's going to be uh, several hours before we get a good look at the data. Um, so it's too early to tell whether it's, uh, it's the same thing as we faced last time in terms of the, uh, you know, the symptoms and the, and the data pattern. We, we just don't know right now. What I can say is that we did put additional telemetry points and we do have additional instrumentation on this flight. Uh, so we do have a leg up um, on, on determining uh, root cause this time. And, uh, but it's too early to tell if it, if it is in fact the same cause. Uh, Omar, um, are you going to be able to pinpoint more where the satellite might have ended up? Yeah, late, we should be able to. Uh, it's just too preliminary to, to, to get the trajectory of, of where it ended up. But um, seeing that it's similar weight to what OCA was and uh, the same launch vehicle performance, it, it's likely, physics says it's likely in the same spot or, or close to it. Can you explain, um, is there any kind of difference between the system that's been used on glory versus what's flown successfully on Minotaur in terms of trying to figure what what happened? Um, the uh, the fairing system itself is uh, is very similar but they are different fairings between the two vehicles. Um, the uh, they're different sizes for one thing the Minotaur fairing is quite a bit larger uh, but it does use the same basic mechanisms, the same frangible joint system for, for the, uh, the separation or the fracturing process. And the jettison system, the piston system, is, is almost identical. So, uh, but, but there are differences in terms of the fairing size and, uh, and the geometry of the fairing. I wonder from a NASA standpoint if you can speak, maybe expand a little bit on, on how the Earth Science Group and the scientists here who've spent decades on this mission rebound from this and how, how the crew uh, might bond together in this uh, to recover from this loss. Well, as, uh, as, as you mentioned, the, um, um, these missions are developed, as you well know, over a course of, of uh, a number of years. Uh, by uh, some very dedicated people um, uh, overcoming great odds uh, and uh, develop that really as a family. And, uh, and so uh, they respond um, to disappointments um, as, a as a family would, quite frankly. And uh, so I think, uh, you know, if you can imagine um, uh, uh, how any family responds to a loss uh, uh, that, that might occur, uh, they've overcome other obstacles previously. Uh, I'm sure they'll overcome this one, although uh, it, it is uh, quite painful uh, after having dedicated so many years of your life. Um, can you comment on the status of OCO2? Will it still use the current plan is to fly on a Taurus XL? Is that what's the plan now? Well, uh, OCO2 is, is uh, in development and a um, uh, couple of years away from launch yet, we'll have to evaluate, um, you know, the outcome of this investigation and, and uh, we'll adjust our plans appropriately. Any other questions? All right, in that event, seeing none, that uh, will conclude this briefing. Thank you very much.